In this video, I'm going to show you how I organize my Procreate files for architectural and interior designs. I will be talking about my drawing workflow and layer structure using real projects that I've worked on to demonstrate how I iterate, present, and communicate my ideas. If you are new to the channel, my name is Henry and I share architectural drawing tips on YouTube. And if you are already a subscriber, then you know I use an app called Procreate on the iPad most of the time. Before we get started, I want to talk about some of the benefits working on the iPad. Now, you don't have to be using Procreate like I do because these concepts are applicable to other drawing apps on the market as well. One of the things that I find very useful is design iteration. So instead of relying on physical trace paper, my digital layers act as my modern day trace and I use it to flush out my ideas very quickly and I can exhaust all the options on screen even before printing it out. Sometimes a project can have many schemes, so the quickness of working with layers allows me to evaluate much faster simply by turning on and off layers where each layer is optioned by itself. In addition, a floor plan can also have multiple smaller options in a given area, so by strategically drawing in layers, I can mix and match different scenarios and save them as potential options very quickly. Lastly, let's not forget the speed or the time to do all this, which I think is the biggest advantage among them all. Exporting, saving, and sharing couldn't be simpler on the iPad. No more scanning your drawings, using whiteouts, and fiddling in Photoshop, which are all steps that slows down your process. My own workflow involves airdropping my drawings straight to my Mac and link it into InDesign for presentation. Personally, I haven't found any difference in my creative process when I'm drawing on the iPad as opposed to using the traditional pen and paper, which was something that I worried about in the beginning, coming from many years drawing on Trace. I think it helps if you have the iPad with the biggest screen so you don't feel claustrophobic when you're drawing. Check out my video on which iPad to buy above if you are in the searching phase. Let's talk a little bit about my workflow. When working on iPad, you have to be very organized with your file structure. Just because you can create as many layers as you want, it doesn't mean you should. Why? Because if you drew every little thing on a different layer, then you're going to have problems when you're trying to find the right layer to add or erase something. So if you're the indecisive kind, remember to merge your layer from time to time. Another reason to keep organized is depending on which iPad model you have, you might be limited to a maximum number of layers that you can create due to the iPad's internal memory size. You have to do a little research on your own, but generally a more expensive model will come with a bigger internal memory. I have the third generation iPad Pro and I've never run out of layers. Now let's look at this layer structure in this file where I think it's a really good example of a project where I am trying to flush out ideas and not necessarily making pretty drawings for the presentation. So let's start from the bottom of this layer structure. And here I have a cat background of the existing condition on the house. Typically, I will have this as a layer to trace over my proposed plan on top because not everything is changing in the house. On top of this layer is my quarter inch scale grid, which you can download in the description below. And if you haven't watched the tutorial on how to use this template, you should watch this video above. So essentially each grid of this is one foot in length. And at this scale, it's really easy to count the number of squares as a way to measure without using a physical scale, which you can't use with an iPad anyways. So this is the template that I use all the time. I haven't really messed up any measurements when I'm trying to uh, transcribe my sketch into AutoCAD hardline drawings. So on top of this scale is a folder that I call base, and this includes all the information that will stay the same in the drawing. So I don't need to redraw in every option, which saves time. So in this project, the left side of the house stays the same in all the options. This also has the setback and the boundaries and the landscaping component that I can toggle on and off when I need it. This folder called design option contains all the design thinking with 11 possible scheme for how we wanted to organize the intervention. Not all 11 options were presented to the client, but we're all reviewed internally first to select a few likely candidates. These sketches are often done very quickly and to scale. 
I know they're not the prettiest, but they serve an important purpose, which is to get the conversation going with the client as early as possible without investing too much time and energy in a single scheme. After a client has waiting their opinion and approved a design direction forward, I usually will refine the idea further in a nicer sketch floor plan for the next meeting before jumping into AutoCAD to work it out. This has proven to be a very effective workflow as sometimes I think we can get a little caught up too early in AutoCAD during a design thinking phase when we should be relying on the quickness of a freehand drawing to explore as many ideas as we can. I wanna show you another example where different options are presented in a more localized manner and in this floor plan, I have one floor plan that I've sketched out in its entirety. Instead of sketching out other options in a full floor plan, what I've done was to reduce the opacity on the main plan and overlay other ideas on top. I can imagine this could be useful where you might want to consider mixing and matching different layers into various design options. Often clients will like certain things from one scheme and another thing from another scheme. This way you can toggle ideas on and off and export it out as a quick update. If you are interested to take a closer look at some of my other Procreate files that includes plan, interior elevation, and perspective, you can find them in the link below. My workflow is really self-taught and I always seek to optimize it in any way I can. So I'd love to hear what you think and how you are using Procreate differently from me. In the meantime, you might enjoy my other video on how to work with senior architects as a young designer in the office. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.